Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Today we are going to talk about storing, remembering things, remembering a logic signal, yeah? one logic signal. This is currently enough for us, so we are talking about a one-bit memory. Okay? How to store a signal and delete it again. Yeah? How can be, this be done with standard elements? Let's first try with standard elements. Well, one possibility would be if I just would use somewhere an OR. OR element. Here is the line, the logic signal I want to store. Here is the output, the stored value. That's it, right? So, so here's the set signal, eh? and here is the stored value. This is usually marked with Q. Let's see what is happening here. Let's see what is happening here. Let's have a look at the timing diagram. Eh? So, T, here's logically one. If S is zero, and at a certain point in time we will go to one, what will Q make? Q will do exactly the same. Okay, so Q is zero, yeah? and then we will reach one. Zack. Yeah? And after a while, after S is gone. Q will remain on because it will feed itself. Huh? We have really stored something. <laughs> we have really stored something. Yeah. Issue. It is not exactly, um, you know, okay, remembering things is one time, but sometimes it's good to forget things as well. This memory cannot forget. So this is not suitable really for storing. Huh? So I need something which will disturb my feedback signal here. Okay, so I need to open the feedback signal somehow. So if I extend this memory now, and here I put in some other element, huh? the above thing, the storing thing, worked already pretty well. Huh? So we'll use this again and say, hey, here, set line, S, set, yeah? and here is the stored value, Q. And I will feed it back via one element. Yeah? And this, so I need to somehow disturb or block this signal here. So I need an end and I say not this. Yeah? Here we have a reset line marked with R. Reset line. Let's see the timing diagram. Here we have again S this time we also have R somewhere, and we have also Q. So, at the beginning, S is zero, everything is zero. At a certain point in time, S is reaching the one level. Here we have again logically one. And we'll go away. And stay there. See what is happening. Yeah? If S is reaching, yeah, let's say R is not here, R will stay low. Yeah? And at a later point in time, we will set an R impulse. Yeah? So R is not here, S is here. So if S is here, for sure Q will be here. 
Yeah? So the output will for sure go up here to 1. Yeah? Then S is going away. S is 0. Q is 1. So we have here 1. R is 0. So after, after the naught, it will be 1. So we will pass here. We will stay on. Yeah? And here, after we have reached the 1 level here, yeah? after the naught, it will be 0. The end is blocked. So we will drop here. Zack. One bit memory. Alright? So this memory can store information and reset information, get rid of information again. This is how one bit memory with standard element might look like. Great, huh? And we have already talked about NAND and NOR technology. I show you how a NOR memory looks like because they are very usual. And I tell you, Two elements are enough. So I need one NOR. I need a second NOR element. And how to connect them? Well, here is a Q line, a S line. Here is a R line. All right. Here we have the set and the reset lines. Then this will be fed back to here. And this will be fed back to here. And now I will do something which looks a little bit awful, but it has a meaning. I will cross the outputs. For whatever reason. Yeah. Good. Let's see how this is working. Huh? Let's see, uh, let's say uh, we have the, the, the initial value would be here zero, here zero. If this is zero and let's say this is zero, this must be this must be one. Yeah? If this is one, this is one, this is zero. Yeah? So we have a zero. So here we have uh, 1 and 0, those two lines. Yeah. So here we have, uh, what is this, 0, and here we have 1. Okay. That's the initial condition. Then, let's say we bring in here a 1. Okay. We bring in here a 1, here is 0, still 0. 1 and 0 or is 1, not is 0. So suddenly we change here to 0. This changing to 0, here we stay at 0. 0 and 0 will 0 and here will go to 1. Book. Yeah. Suddenly with an, a 1 signal on the S signal, we will get here 1. All right. And this is changing to 0. Right. So Let's remove this. Let's remove this one signal again. So let's say we have here zero and zero. Yeah. What is happening? What is happening? Here we have now one. This is new. This one. Yeah. Comes from here. This goes to zero. This is one. So this will still be one. We will stay here at zero. So here will be zero and here is also zero, zero, zero. We will stay here at one. Yeah. So even after removing the S signal, this is still one. All right. And now let's see what is happening if I put in in here a one, and this will stay zero. Yeah. Here nothing much is changing. It will stay one. Yeah. So this is staying zero. So we have here zero, zero and one is 1, but not is 0, all right? Suddenly we have here 0, after 0, 0 and 0 is 0, and here we have 1, we have 1, zack, zack. This is 0 again, and this is getting 1. 
Mm -hmm. And now the final thing where we have to check is what happens if we put both to zero again. So here we have one now, Zack. One and zero are one and not a zero, so we will stay here at zero. Uh, this will stay at zero, we said. Uh, zero and zero is one, we'll stay here at one. Yeah. Zero and zero is zero and not is one. So with the set input, I can exactly set this output. And with the reset input, I can exactly reset this output. So this is a one bit memory where this output here serves as Q and these outputs here serves as not Q. All right? So this is Q and not Q. Such memories. Yeah? Such memories, they have a, a unique symbol, a own symbol, uh, and it's looking like that. Yeah? It's a block. Where we have the S input, the R input, then we have the Q and the not Q output. Right? So that's that's the symbol, the corresponding symbol of this memory. Yeah? So we have to connect here S line, we have to connect here the R line, we have then as available outputs, Q and not Q. Symbol. Eh? This is the symbol. One bit memory. There's only one issue. Yeah? What if both signals are one? Yeah? Then this, I mean, here it's one and one. Yeah, this is for sure one. So both outputs will go to zero. A memory where the outputs, both outputs, logically inverted outputs, are both zero. This is not logic. Yeah, this is an issue. Yeah, so we somehow have to adapt our our things here and have to select which signal has to yield. Okay. So if I want to have, for instance, uh, for sure S, S has to be priority. Yeah. Then I could do it like that. I'll draw in, draw the memory. And if S has, has priority, I will use here So we have here S and R, Q and not Q, zack zack. Here S has priority, so whenever S is here, I will block R. Alright? So we have here S, R, here. S has priority, because whenever S is here, R is blocked, and this does not see that both are there. Okay? So, this is S priority. Then, exactly the same way, but vice versa, would be R priority. How does this look like? Well, we have here again the memory. Then we have this end. And here not S and not R. So here, this AND with the inverted input will block the S signal uh, whenever R is here. So we have R priority. 
and then there would be also the possibility to do the first signal priority. Yeah, so first signal. How does this look like? Well, of course, we have somewhere memory. This time I really have to draw it here. Then I need two ends. Because I need to do to block both S, R, Q, not Q. Alright, so this will go to S, this will go to R, alright, and here we have a S line, here we have a R line. And here we have Q and not Q. What we need to block? Yeah? Whenever S finds its way through, yeah, we will block R. Whenever R finds its way through, we will block S. So the first signal will block the other, will block the other signal. Yeah? So that's priority to the first arriving signal. Yeah? Then we are reaching a defined behavior. Right? This is how a one-bit memory is working. Yeah? We can do a lot of stuff with these one-bit memories. Yeah? Next time. There is not only the logic inputs. There are also there are also uh, you know dynamic inputs. How dynamic inputs are working uh, and and why they are here. Next time we will going to talk about dynamic inputs. How they are working and why they we are here. They are here. We will see in in later videos uh, so that they are meaningful. Yeah. Oh, forgot here. Make a connection point. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.